of us get into relationships and spend a lot of the time wondering whether this will last, whether our partner really loves us, whether they want us, whether we're doing the right thing. And we kind of hope and are expecting for love to just be there. It's kind of a given gift that bases, based on the fact that you guys have been together and you have a connection, so on, that love will just flow naturally. So instead of spending that time really putting in the effort and doing something about making the relationship work and being proactive rather than passive, we spend that time just ruminating and wondering um, instead of actually taking control and doing something about it. So what are the things that you can do to make your relationship work? If you haven't been to my page, welcome. I'm Hamasa. I look at personal development as well as day-to-day -day issues and mental and emotional well-being. Please do subscribe so that you're up to date with all my content. Right, so we do seem to just hope that love comes along because we're together and we're in a relationship and therefore like, you know, we're doing cute things together and the love should be there. But there are things that you should or you can and can't do that will actually make the relationship better or work today. Like you can take things into your own hands, be proactive, take control, and earn the love, give the love, create the love. Don't just hope that it will come to you from somewhere naturally. It's like a divine gift and it's the expected. So what are the things that you can do um, to really make your relationship last and work? Um, of course, you don't have predictability or control over the other person, but you can do things that are down to you that make your partner feel loved, respected and reassured and in turn it's only natural for them to reciprocate that back. So the first thing is to really truly listen. We tend to, especially when it comes to arguments and adversity, we tend to just listen to respond not listen to comprehend. You kind of want them to get their words out so that you could go back with your reply quickly. And that's not really, really truly listening. So really hear out what your partner's saying. Most people are pretty open and pretty, you know, communicative when it comes to their emotional needs or if that's not being met. So if they're expressing that to you, pay attention to what they're saying and really make them feel that you're listening and do listen, do something about it. Don't just act like you're listening and then not act on the actions. The next thing would be to love them the way that they want to be loved. Um, it's, a, it's important for us to understand that different people have different love languages and what may seem like an act of love to you may not be an act of love to them. So allow them to be themselves, their idea of intimacy or socialization or fun or whatever that it is, if that's what they like and choose to do and they enjoy, then you want to show them that, that you love them and accept them and you want to have a good time with them, then do what you know will make them happy. Pay attention to that, pay attention to their love language and provide the thing that they appreciate the most or they see as the act of the most act of love or kindness towards um, them. So it's important for you to show them that you are getting to know their aspects and you're loving them the way they want to be loved, not what you think is the way to love them. The next thing to do to maintain your relationship is to show your partner, make them feel very safe and secure. Safety is one of the reasons where problems occur. If your partner or you don't feel safe in the relationship in terms of making yourself vulnerable, opening up, then most likely it's not going to work. So you need to show them and make them feel safe in your presence emotionally. And to do that is to show them that you're on their side. So even if you're having a disagreement, just make them understand that it's nothing personal, it's not towards you. I'm not attacking you as a person, I just don't agree that this should be done this way. Or just 
that the, you guys are still on the same team. The arguments and disagreements are not you versus me, it's you and me versus the problem, always. You and I are a team and we're dealing with the problem at hand that's faced by both of us. That's important. They need to feel like they're part of the team and you're on their side. And they need to feel that you really appreciate them and you're making an effort in their name, whether they're there or not. So there are little things that you're doing or you're speaking of them or you're maintaining that respect for them in their presence or behind their backs. And that creates a sense of safety all around. The next thing would be to make your partner feel wanted in both emotionally and physically. So compliments, appreciating their physical attributes as well as their effort and their mental and emotional attributes too. But sometimes you find guys that are with a beautiful girl and they don't want to compliment her because she gets it from everybody else. But what you need to understand is that your opinion is actually the only one that really matters to her. So what you say means the world in comparison to the world saying it to her. So it's a big difference when it comes from the person that you really appreciate and value. And it's the same for guys. So compliments work both ways. Um, ladies, it's not just about take, take, take and expect to be showered with compliments and appreciation, but never really reciprocating that back. Men too like to be complimented both on their physical and mental and emotional or their effort. So whenever you see something good, let them know, make their day. We all have habits, histories and pasts that make us difficult to be around in certain times and circumstances. So whenever that occurs, it's our duty to let our partner know and give them a, the context of why you do the things you do, you behave the way you do, and where this is coming from. So that it's not projected on them, it's not making them feel like they've done something wrong, and it needs to be told to them and explained to them in a very calm, graceful manner. So that you're not attacking them, you're not blaming them, you're not blaming your trauma, you're actually explaining that certain times when you do this, or when I do this, it comes from a lack of or an excess of and this is why this happens and do it in a way that you know just like I'm letting you know you by you doing these things you're kind of teaching your partner how to also treat you if you're doing all these lovely kind things for your partner and really making them feel hard and they're not reciprocating any of it then that's a great sign for you to see that they don't see you or appreciate and value you the same way that you value and appreciate them. But most people who are good people and want to make the relationship work and love you and want to do the, thing, the effort that you're making for them, then when they see you be the way you are, as in listen to them, appreciate them, love them the way that they want to be loved, explain things to them, respect them, then it's only normal and natural and human to give those things back. Like, that's the, that's the nice thing to do. Like, if your partner's being so sweet and caring and emotionally mature about situations, why wouldn't you want to do that back for them? So in a way, you're not only being nice because you love the person and you want to make them happy, but you're also teaching them in how to treat you. And my last point would be that whenever your partner's going through something difficult or they're having a breakdown, then it's your job to be the strong one. Relationships and things are never 50-50. They're a balance. They're not an equality. When you're weak, they're going to be strong, and when they're strong, and when they're weak, you're going to be strong for them. So to understand that my partner's having a breakdown and I need to pull us together, and I'm gonna be the backbone of this, then don't hold that against them, don't humiliate them, don't get personal, don't point fingers, just be supportive and understand that right now you need me the most, so despite the fact that I may be very angry at you for whatever's happened, I understand that you are breaking, so I'm not going to let you break, I'm going to hold you together and then we can dis discuss the things that have annoyed me. And doing these little rules and practices, which we're all capable of doing, is just a sign of maturity, then will also put us at ease knowing that if we did everything we could we were the best version of ourselves and the best 
possible partner that we could be and it still didn't work out, then we have no guilt to feel. We did everything in our power and it still didn't work, then it's not on us. Because if you let a good thing go or a good person go and you understand that it was lack of you listening, lack of you making reassuring your partner, lack of you making them feel hurt, lack of you showing them the, the, the respect that they deserve, then you're going to forever beat yourself up and feel really, really guilty and broken about the relationship not working out because there were things that you could have done differently. But if you are your best version and doing everything right and it still doesn't work, then it's not meant to be and you cannot force people to love you the way you want to be loved or be with you just because you want them. Um, and so there's no guilt to be felt. You gave it your all, it didn't work out, it's not meant to be. And there's someone who would appreciate and see all the things you do for them and do them back for you. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have and you think someone may need it, please do share it, subscribe to my page, like and comment, and I will see you guys here again very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.